Brandis, is this summer nearly 40 million American families will be eligible to start receiving monthly direct deposits in their bank accounts. The expansion of the child tax credit is included in President Joe Biden's American Rescue Plan that was signed into law in March. 90% of the families, all middle class and working class families, will get this tax cut. It's a one year cut that reduces your taxes by $3,000 a year for each child you have under the age of 18. Two kids, it's a $6,000 tax cut. And if those kids are under the age of six, they'll actually get $3,600 per child. Now, while some are praising the effort to reduce child poverty, others are wondering if the IRS is equipped to deliver on such a big feat. And joining us to provide their perspectives are David Henderson, a research fellow at the conservative think tank, the Hoover Institution, and a professor emeritus of economics at the Naval Postgraduate School in California. And Jeremy Rosen, director of economic justice at the Shriver Center on Poverty Law, a local group aimed at pursuing economic and racial justice. Welcome both of you gentlemen. And uh, before uh, I get into questions, I just want to get into what this expanded child tax credit entails. So it's 3,600 per child ages six and under, 3,000 per child uh, between ages six and 17. And that's an increase from where it was at uh, 2,000 per child, zero to 17 back in 2020 and before. And of course we should mention there are income limits in receiving these benefits. Uh, David Henderson, the president says this could sh cut child poverty in half and would especially help low income families. Do you see it that way? Well, I do, but I think there's a big problem with it, which is that it's a, it's a, a transfer essentially to people not for doing anything, but for having children. And I think that's a very bad way to go. Jeremy Rosen, what about that? Uh, I mean, so David is saying it, it probably would cut childhood poverty, but it's it's giving money uh, just for the for for the sake of having children. Well, it's not just for the sake of having children. It's recognizing that in this country we don't support families very well, um, and if we want to make sure that the economy is working well, that folks are working, um, that families are stable. We should do what most countries um, in uh, the Western Hemisphere and Europe, uh, many of our peer nations do, and begin to think about offering a child allowance uh, to families in our, in our country. And this program would be a first step in that direction. We think it's very important. So David, as a conservative, do you believe that there is uh, a different approach that would achieve the same outcome of cutting childhood poverty down and helping low-income families defray some of these costs? I'm, I'm not a conservative, but I do think there's a better way. I mean, the number, way, number one way out of poverty is having a full-time job. So if you have two people together who have full-time jobs, they will not be poor in this country, and they can build up their earnings and then have kids once they're settled, once they have those earnings. So I think that's a much better way. Get rid of, there are 800 occupations in which people need some kind of government permission to operate and to work. And 29% in, in of the labor force is in those occupations, up from 5% 60 years ago. So get rid of those restrictions, get rid of a lot of those restrictions and make it easier for people to get work. Jeremy Rosen, part of this plan is giving monthly payments to families between two and $300. Uh, instead of just uh, claiming a refund uh, once a year uh, on, on your tax return, uh, talk about the impact of that, having that option. That's gonna be a huge impact. Um, for folks to know that predictably every month for the rest of the year from July through December, they're going to get a cash payment that they can plan for uh, to use for important expenses in their household. It's critical. This is really a pro-family plan and a plan that will cut child poverty tremendously in our country. I'm not really sure how anyone could possibly object to that. And, and indeed, the Utah Republican Senator Mitt Romney uh, agrees in principle on a similar plan. His plan would actually provide more money and there would be no income limits on being able to receive those benefits. Uh, David Henderson, what about that plan? Well, that's even more expensive. It isn't that there are no income limits, but the income limits are about half a million a year for, uh, you know, for a married couple. <laughs> no one could call them poor. Uh, so, so I think it's just it's a way more expensive plan. And what about the criticism, Jeremy Rosen, that the IRS uh, is going to have trouble sort of identifying who qualifies here and, and setting up a system whereby families can receive this benefit? 
Well, I'd say this, I think we they have set up a system and they've said that they're gonna start making these payments in July. Um, so I'm optimistic that it's gonna work well. I think we'd certainly prefer in the long run um, a permanent plan because this of course is just a one year plan as the president noted. Um, and if we establish a permanent plan, I would expect um, that we could do even better at streamlining how people would receive those benefits. Um, but I'm expecting this plan to work tremendously well, get money into people's pockets as the recovery goes forward. And Can I uh, point out one other thing? Sure, go ahead, David. We care about children, but children become adults. And so when they become adults, there's, they're gonna be facing their share of a huge, huge federal debt. And we are so buried in debt now, and that's only increasing. And that's another reason I think this is, I mean, if you ever wondered about how to time this, this is not the time. Well, Jeremy Rosen, you know, the president has also proposed a $1.8 trillion American Families Plan that, among other things, would further help defray a child care costs. And he is proposing to pay for that partially through higher taxes on higher income earners. What effect do you think that would have on lower income families and the economy at large? Well, that's right, Paris. Um, and in fact, the president's plan proposes to extend this particular child tax credit that we're talking about through 2025. And, you know, my colleague mentions the national debt, but the president's plan includes a proposal to pay for this uh, and by raising taxes on the highest income folks in our country who have done very, very well, even as um, middle class and, and working class folks in our country have struggled in the current economy. So we think. All right, uh, looks like we froze up. We, we have to leave it there. Our thanks to David Henderson and Jeremy Rosen. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.